Hey everybody, it's Dale Jr. back again for another episode of the Dale Jr. Download, and we've got a great guest for you this week. Donnie Reeves is coming on the show. Donnie is one of Dad's best friends. All through the 70s and the 80s, the 90s, Donnie was there for a lot of things happening in my dad's life. He was the best man in his wedding. Can't wait to hear these stories. Donnie's never told him. Doesn't do interviews. Won't do interviews, but we convinced him to come today. Let's get started. The following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. All right, we're back in the Dirty Mo studio. And thank you, Ally, for bringing us the guest segment each single week. Um, Ally's supported us here at Dirty Mo Media and at the Dale Jr. Download so well. They do so much in our sport, and we're thankful for them. And they brought us another ally this week for their, for our guest, Donnie Reeves. Why Donnie Reeves? Well, Donnie Reeves is one of my dad's best friends. It's time for an Earnhardt show, all right? And um, I've always wanted to have Donnie come on, but Donnie is reluctant to do interviews. Uh, doesn't feel like he needs to tell these stories. Doesn't want to tell these stories. He lived it. He's, uh, you know, his friendship with my dad is a close one, and he wants to protect uh, my dad's legacy and, his, and those stories and just isn't interested in going around and doing inter- interviews about it. Um, but I've talked to him and told him that I'd love to have him on my show convinced him to be here i can't wait to learn what we might learn certainly going to hear about some experiences that he had with dad uh, what that must have been like this is somebody who you know would go out to dinner go hunting um not you know certainly was with dad at the racetrack but knew dad on a very personal level there's just not a lot of people that were in dad's inner circle and Donnie was one of them. Donnie would be the kind of person that Dad would call Sunday night after the race, multiple times during the week, asking for advice. Um, really trusted Donnie. Uh, Donnie was very, I think you'll learn that Donnie was really convicted or, 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 or headstrong or committed to his own path. And not swayed at all by dad his you know his his uh hard-headedness his sternness his his strong opinion or his celebrity and his success never changed donnie in the way johnny donnie thought about his own decisions in life and it never changed donnie's uh, reaction and, and engagement with dad. And I believe that that's why dad really truly valued Donnie's relationship because he knew he could call Donnie and say, what should I do? And Donnie would give him his truth, his honest opinion and not alter what he would say or soften what he would say due to dad's stature or who dad had become in the, you know, in the eyes of all of all of the fans and so forth in NASCAR. You know, it was one, there's only a few people in dad's life that I think he truly believed Saul uh, treated him the way he, he, sh- he truly needed to be treated all the time, right? Honest, with honesty and tr- true transparency. And Donnie's one of those people. And so, you know, you'll learn in the stories that Donnie had some several opportunities to be a bigger part of dad's career and just never was going to do it. He was committed to his own life, his own family history, his own family responsibilities, and it'll be great to talk about that. But um, let's just get him in the room so you can learn for yourself um, all about Donnie Reeves. All right, so um, sitting here with Donnie Reeves. Donnie Reeves is a great friend of my dad's. Uh, Donnie Reeves does not do interviews, do you, Donnie? No, I don't. Yeah, so what brings you here today? Well, uh... I made a deal with myself. He asked me one time, he said, if anything ever happens to me, do not write a book and don't go telling yeah. everything we know. Yeah. And But I figured that uh, being how it was you, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, he would he would okay it. He'd be all right with it. He'd be all right with it. Yep. Do you ever watch our show? It's okay. The, to the be truth. Honest. The truth is, yeah. I've seen a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Garrett has showed showed it to me. Yep. With uh, 
Hank, and, mm-hmm. but uh, Hank Parker Jr. and stuff. Yeah, some of that stuff. Yep. Yeah. So Garrett Barger is your your nephew, right? And one of my one of my very close friends, Garrett, used to go with me to my late model races back in the '90s. Garrett became a highway state patrolman for North Carolina, and uh, he's near retirement uh, at this yeah. point. Both of us. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, a lot of time has passed. Donnie, you were dad's, uh, I guess, to highlight or punctuate your relationship with my, with my dad. You were his best man at his wedding with Teresa. Correct. And, um, but we want to know more. Um, you're born and raised in Rowan County, North Carolina, near Salisbury. You're still there. You've been there your whole life. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. Sure. What, was, what was your dad's business? Uh, he was in the used car business. Yep. And uh, he uh, expanded and got big enough to where we had a fairly big shop and like body a service shop department and, body shop. Yep. And and upholstery shop. Oh yeah. And so when I got out of high school, I didn't want to be a car buyer or a car salesman. So I took over the shop. Okay. <laughs> Running that. <laughs> Running that. And I was happy because that's, that's what I'd been doing since I was about six years old was he had one mechanic then, and I stuck with him. Yeah. And uh, enjoyed it so much. That's all I wanted to do. So you were you were very com- uh, competent on automotives and working on cars. Yes, sir. Um, you and your dad eventually, I think, w- would also – uh, build and develop a sporting sporting goods store of some kind, right? Tell me about <laughs> yeah. that. Uh-huh. Well, we had a, a little piece of property there, and and so uh, Daddy decided he was going to build a strip mall. Mm-hmm. And at one end, he made it right much bigger and asked me, he said, uh, you want to run a sporting goods store, which – he knew what the answer was going to be because we were hunting and fishing all the time. Yeah. And so uh, we did. We opened that up in 84. Wow. Okay. I I remember that um, being something that Dad was uh, always going to. <laughs> you know. He called it the jot them down store. <laughs> <laughs> he, he'd call me up and. Hey, you got anything new at the jot them down store? I said, you never know what we're going to have. And what was really funny was uh, uh, we'd go fishing and stuff, but he'd then uh, Neil Bonnet, he'd call me up, and he said, hey, me and Neil's coming down there. We need some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd come in and get a basket and bring it up there. And I said, well, you got your stuff. I'm going to see if you can catch anything with it. Yeah. So um, you're, you know, you're a big car fan. Let's kind of connect you to motorsports. How do you end up? Um, how do you end up getting involved in racing, which would eventually lead to the friendship you'd have, my dad? Uh, well, my daddy was a race fan, especially dirt tracks and NASCAR. But he uh, started taking me when I was about seven because i just ragged him continuously and my mother told him he said you have ruined that boy yeah and we lived in an apartment till about 1960 which i was uh, nine years old and where we moved across right on 52 it was a man had a we, me and another friend of mine, Lynn Sink, which I think you know, I Lynn. Know name, yeah. We we heard a race car one afternoon, and that was the start of it. It was just a. Uh, uh, he didn't care. He wanted to run good, but it wasn't. It was beat up. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know how we started. Yeah. That's where I learned how to weld and everything else was on that car. Yep. So you was in. You heard a car down the street. Yep. Went down there to see what it was, and you was a uh, you hooked ever since. Yeah, ever since. So I know that you were a devout 
uh, churchgoers. So, you know, you had to work around your religion and your belief in, uh, you know, all, you know, your dedication to that. Uh, and racing, yeah. racing sometimes fell, fell around, you know, your responsibilities at church. Well, yes. Uh, you know, well, when we were starting, it was all on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Right. So I had no trouble with the church, uh, which, in my opinion, that's, I mean, if you miss church or that's not what gets you to heaven anyway. Mm-hmm. It's completely the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Completely. Nothing else. You can't work. You can't give enough money. You can't do anything to get there because you're not good enough. I mean, you just you can you can't cover your sins, and he did. And then when we started running, you know, I felt that I couldn't do it. And then it was like, yes, you can because you can represent me at the racetrack. I got you. And so you found a way to you know, level with it. Yeah, you know, uh, it just it, that's that's what I did. Yeah. And uh, of course, I didn't go every Sunday and every race and all that. But yeah. I had a good time, as as Daddy said. I've never worked a day in my life, and I'm not <laughs> going to start now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, you're going to uh, you're going to these dirt races on you know helping me and a mechanic uh, yeah well uh at 12 i was working on the car i helped yeah. working on the cars and then i run into uh uh troy trexler and butch trexler and and we started bringing them to the shop at the mechanic shop yep. we'd work on them there we built some cars there at night what and, year is this roughly uh, this yeah. this is uh, 72, okay. 73, yep. long in there. And I got to know you, granddaddy, real good. How? Uh, Butch knew him, and then uh, he would, I don't know, he and I just, just like me and Dale, we just hit it off. You'd see him at a racetrack? Oh, yeah. What racetracks were you going to? Concord, Metrolina, mm-hmm. and... Uh, I got to hanging around at the truck. Yeah. And at Ralph's truck? Yeah. 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 You I remember mean, the blue truck? Blue oh, Shelly? yeah. I got yeah. it. Uh, you got it. Yeah, I found yeah. it. Yeah. The one with the board sides, <laughs> yeah. flatbed. Well, I got to hang doing that, and he'd tell me what Reeves. That's what he called me all the time. Mm-hmm. Never called me Donnie, just Reeves. Reeves, you need to go down there and do this to your car uh, so it'll run better. Yeah. I'd do it. You know, yeah, and uh, no question, not no yeah. questions, just do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, what kind of person was Ralph? Super good. He 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 and you and Dale all have got that Earnhardt grin. And when he grinned at you, you knew everything was going to be pretty good, <laughs> or or it wasn't, <laughs> because I've been to the shop with him before. Drive up to the shop. Over at Mamaw's house? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And go in the shop, and I don't know, go down there to ask him something or yeah, just general stuff. And he would uh, he'd just look at me, and I'd go sit down in a chair. He might be working on somebody's car, or he might be doing something. He'd say, sit there for 45 minutes, never have a word, and then I'd get up. Reeves, sit down. I'll be down in a minute. You know. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I've had him to do that. And uh, But one of the best times <laughs> with with your granddaddy, he, I asked him one time, I said, Ralph, well, you like to bird hunt? He said, man, I got bird dogs. So me and him got to go and bird hunting. Around, really? Oh, yeah, in that scout. You, do you, you don't remember the scout? I don't the remember scout. the scout. Oh, my. It was like being at Concord, but it had a lot of hills in it, uh-huh. up and down. And uh, uh, we'd go bird hunting. Then 
Uh, I had a new, got a new bird dog one time. I told him, I said, Ralph, I got a new bird dog. I'm going to bring him down there. We're going to go bird hunting. He said, come on. So I went down there, put him in the back. And where Dale Earnhardt Boulevard is, it was a lot of fields around there and places that we could go. Mm -hmm. he, he knew the people. First thing he did was mashed her wide open and went down through there and hit the hit the bumps and the truck come off the ground and hit back and he stopped the truck, turned around and looked in the back. He said, Your bird dog rode in the truck before. <laughs> That's all he said. <laughs> I said, Yeah, but I hadn't <laughs> <laughs> So um But he was he was to the point, but I mean it was just we just had a good time. Yeah. What is where is dad during these this time? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, he wasn't at the shop. He, he and I asked him. I said, "Why don't Dale go bird hunting with us?" He said, "He ain't gonna go." Yeah. You know. He said, "I don't know where he's at." <laughs> you know, just like that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, How old were you at this time? Yeah. Uh, I was. Yeah. You driving? Twin yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was driving. So uh, when do you uh and dad's friendship start when when do you and him become pals? How when does dad finally start coming around? Mm, the first time was when we was running six cylinders. Mm -hmm. And me and him, I'd see him at he'd be over to his daddy's truck and I'd see him say, How you doing? She said, Doing good. I'm going to outrun you tonight, you know, because yeah. I had a car, but Butch was driving it. And uh, and I said, maybe. <laughs> 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 and uh, But this is a story that most everybody doesn't know, and very few people now would probably remember. But one night we were at Concord, yep. and Dale and Butch, when they dropped it, flag at the main event they just run off i mean they they were just together uh, all around the track and about five laps in of course they had a caution flag and we stopped and i saw your daddy he motioned for me to come up to his car because that's when we go out and wipe the windshield yeah and so i said what in the world's he want so i walked up there and they stuck my head in the window they said Go back there and tell Butch that me and him is going to put on a show. We're going to take off, and when we get like 10, 15 car lengths, he'll run on the outside a while, and he a lap, and he said, then I'll drop down, and he can run on the inside a while. And he said, just tell him we want to put on a show. We will not spin each other out, because both of them was bad to touch somebody. Yeah. I said, okay. So I went back there and told Butch. Didn't tell anybody else. They dropped the flag, and for 10 laps, it was just side by side, door. They'd, they'd rub each other's doors going down yeah. the straightaway, one to duck on the inside. And that's when John Gasky run the track. And uh, The old gas car yeah, deal. Yeah. Wow. And, I mean, we was running, I think he was driving, uh, I forgot what they was driving. But we was running that 40, 40 Ford Coupe, mm -hmm. and Troy Trexler that uh, we built the cars. He said, he said he's gonna put him out. He's going. I said, Troy, don't worry about it. He's not gonna put him out. So on the last lap, they come off a of four side by side, and your daddy beat us by about a bumper. <laughs> and you granddad, I saw you. I saw Ralph later on. He said, I almost got him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's about the time we started talking and and just hanging, well, hanging out at the racetrack. Yeah. You were building your own cars and going to the racetrack, and, and did Dad ever drive your car? Yes, one time. Yeah. Well, while I, me and Troy was building it, Yeah. Uh, we built a— late model sportsman car and put coil springs all the way around it and uh, uh, we were at Metrolina testing and Dale was I think he was driving that 
kit car. Yep. And uh, Larry Wallace, which works for Home and Moody, the in- cam grinder, he was driving our car. And he came and uh, we run a few laps and all. And I told Larry, I said, I said, I'm going to get Dale. I want him to run this thing, see if he thinks it's any different between them two cars. He said, you think he'll run it? I said, just hold on. So I went down there and I asked his daddy. I said, Dale, why don't you come drive my car? He said, I can't drive that car. That's Larry's car. I said, Dale, that's my car. I want you to come drive it. It's fine with Larry. He said, okay. So he come and run it. The second lap, he went into three and four Metrolina and spun it out. <laughs> I mean, and and uh, Larry Wallace said, he spun the car out. I said, Wallace, he done it on purpose. I said, he said, why? I, he said, he wanted to see how far he could drive that thing in there wide open without ever, before he spun out. He went all the way through three, and he was just in just the loop of four and it spun out and he come back in and he well as he he uh, dropped the net and said looked at larry and told him he said you ought to win every race you get in with this car yeah he said it is fast <laughs> 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 and uh, uh that's the only time he drove that one to he and i in 84 or yeah. 85 built a wedge car mm-hmm just to play with yep you had that night where y'all were racing you and butch trexler were racing with dad and and um and then you know he shakes the cars he shakes down your race car um what happened the night where um dad told you he ain't got no friends at, at the end of pit road what is all <laughs> that about we built we built it we was continuously building cars, cause, but we had we built a uh, Nova. I think it was a Nova, and uh, I mean it was pretty black and orange, and it was it was pretty. And Larry was driving, it. and so we went down there and we run uh, went out to practice, and with the brand new car, and he took off, and so. Uh, he was coming around there, and Dale, he come out, and we went down. They went down the front straightaway, and just about the flag stand, he just laid on the uh, driver's door on the inside, and just put tire marks all the way down the side. <laughs> <laughs> and when Larry come in, he said, "I thought you and Dale was friends. Look what he done to your car." I told him, I said, Larry. In the pit road down there, you ain't got any friends. <laughs> <laughs> and your daddy come walking up there. He said, well, that car looked too good. And he said, I figured it needed some tire marks on it before you got to racing it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know, you were coming over to Ralph's shop every once in a while over by Mamaw's house and ended up helping Dad on some of his cars. Um, Dad built a Chevelle for the Sportsman Series that he'd go race at Charlotte and so forth. So mm-hmm. um, I've got some pictures of my own and my own collection of him working on those cars in that shop. And um, not, I mean, just a dark, you know, Ralph been racing out of that place forever and just a rough old race shop, you know, that, um, you know, dad was trying to make his way. I, I, you know, this is probably around 1978. Ralph's yeah. passed away. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess take us through that. Um, when Ralph passed away, I've had the girls, um, Kathy and them come on the show and talk about that experience and vividly the day that it happened. Um, you know, what was that like for you? I guess when you learned that Ralph passed away suddenly and you had this friend that you were, you know, you were close with and you went hunting with and, um, you know, died relatively, relatively young. Um, and how that, you know, how that affected you. Well, uh, it was a real sh- shock, but uh, when he passed away, uh, that's that's the same time that uh, the doctors had already told him he was going to have to lay off and yeah. Stick Elliott was driving. That's right. And uh, during that time, 
I wasn't down there as much, but it uh, I really missed him, and I told, I, of course, I told Dale I did, and uh, uh, your daddy he was trying to get things lined up because he was here and there and everywhere, and I just told him then if he needed any help or anything, I'd be there for him, and uh, so that's when. Uh, him and Hargett yep. got together and uh, uh, started running. And uh, we was running the dirt tracks, and then he wanted to start running like uh, South Boston, and which we went up there a couple of times. But uh, it was a big loss to both of us. Yeah. You know, uh, not being able to communicate with him yeah but uh it uh it just come around and just finally just kept getting better and better so are you helping dad during the during like right after ralph passes away in 73 dad goes and runs his sportsman car with Hargett and on his own a little bit here and there up i mean in 78 he kind of gets his break but between ralph's passing in 73 and you know, through five seventy six. Are you helping Dad? Are you going the racetrack with Dad? No, no, no. You running your own car? Still? I'm running my own cars. Yep. I'm still. And so running y'all my are kind of in two different worlds because da- Dad got on the asphalt. That's right. And you're we, still racing we, dirt. And I'm still racing dirt. So we we got separated there uh, until he built that uh, car the first time we went to Charlotte with the with the little sportsman car yeah to run the 300 to run the 300 now uh he told me then he said he he said i need you to help me on this car and so that was when they were just first coming out to where we put disc brakes on them Mm -hmm. all the way around and and uh, dry sump pumps and he he was running on a budget big time and I'd already worked on, I'd done had disc brakes and this stuff. That, and so when they got ready to build that car, they brought the brakes in there. And he looked at me. He said, you know anything about these? I said, yeah, I put them on before. He said, you the brake man. Put them on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so so uh, we all worked on it and got it to where it. I thought run pretty good. Yeah. Went to Charlotte battling Bobby Allison. Correct. Yeah. And and one little story in there, they all called my daddy, Daddy June. And so we were down at the shop and he said, Donnie, all we got is these tires. I think Ed and Agree had got him some tires that we could go run a little bit with. He said he said, I said, yeah, I know, we got to have some good tires. And I knew uh, Cliff Timberman with Goodyear. Mm-hmm. Me and him was real good friends. I said, let me see what we can do. So I said, come on, let's go to the office and see Daddy. Maybe we can, we can get a set of tires somewhere. And so uh, we walked in the office, and Daddy was in his office. And we walked in there, and he looked up. He said, I know you boys is wanting something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we put our pitch to it <laughs> that we needed some tires. He said, he told us, he said, I'm going to buy you one set. And that's all. Don't come in here with three or four sets of tires yeah. for that car. He said, but I'm going to buy you one set. And he looked and said, Dale, anywhere you can put Reeves Motor Company on there? Yes, sir. We'll put her on the trunk lid. <laughs> Because I can't remember who was on the right on the side. Yeah, though. wow. But he, it was Reeves Motor Company on the trunk lid. <laughs> Daddy told him, he said, I'm going to find out because I'm going to be down there to see. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, That was kind of the race where, um, you know, Dad got recognized. Uh, you know, I think that run at Charlotte in 78 um, kind of piqued some people's interest. Dad would get an opportunity to drive Will Cronkite's car in 1978 for five races, and you would help Dad go get ready and go down to Daytona. Yeah, well, 
he went and he didn't even tell me he was going. And my cousin Jackie, he was there, and Gail, she had got a trip with the. Uh, Gail's tele- your wife. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, she had got a trip to go to Hawaii. But I wouldn't go because they didn't have any racetracks over there. <laughs> and I didn't think they could race without me. Yeah. <laughs> so so, you and had to be so her, her and her girlfriends that were at the, at the uh, telephone office went to Hawaii, and I stayed home. Well, on, I think the race was on either Tuesday or Wednesday, 4th of July race. Yep. And uh, on Sunday, the phone caught phone rang and I picked it up and it was your daddy he said Donnie wh- what you doing I said getting ready to go to church I said me and Jackie uh, we run our car last night it done pretty good but we fixing to go to church now I said where are you at he said I'm at the beach I said you locked up you need me to come get you <laughs> that's the exact words I told him he said no I'm at Daytona Beach and I said what the world are you doing at Daytona he said Will Cronkite's got his car down here, and I'm going to drive it for him. And uh, he said, but I need some help. I said, you need some help? He said, yeah, can you come? I said, yeah, I can come. Uh, and I, I said, I'm going to bring Jackie with me. He said, well, good, because he had been hunting at my cousin's place, yeah, too. So he knew him. And he knew him. He said, well, bring him, too. He, he can clean the windshield. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Uh, we we loaded up and went to <laughs> went to Daytona and run that car. I don't know. Started twenty ninth or twenty something. Yeah. Finished seventh, and I was looking after the tires and doing whatever needed to be done on. Where'd the car. y'all stay? What was the hotel reser- reservation <laughs> like? I bet it was tight. <laughs> it was very tight because I don't know where Dale was. He said you you can stay with me. I said where are you staying? Well, they they were staying like 20 miles from the racetrack mm-hmm. so we got there about i don't know 1 30 or 2 o'clock in the morning and couldn't find anywhere <laughs> so jack so jackie and myself finally stopped at one uh motel and the man told us said yeah he said i got the laundry room out here i got two cots in it and y'all can stay in it tonight if you want to we were dead tired i said we'll take it <laughs> the mosquitoes like to eat us no up. kidding <laughs> yeah but we <laughs> stayed there got up the next morning and jackie reeves my cousin he said we better get over to the racetrack i said racetrack nothing i'm gonna have me an air-conditioned room before i leave <laughs> before i go to the racetrack yeah. so we went around there and found somebody that finally caved in and <laughs> give us two nights instead of the whole week yeah. for the 4th of July. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so that's where we, what we did. Yep. You go over to the racetrack. I mean, Dad's, uh, you know, this has got to be a big world. Dad's now a small fish in a giant pond, uh, you know, the St. Concord or Metrolina. <laughs> that's the same thing he told me. Yeah. He said he was going to have me change the right rear tire. I was going to be the right rear t- 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 tire changer. And for the race, he come over there, and as you know, he was bad to just grab a hold of you. Uh-huh. He grabbed a hold. He said, "Donnie, this is not Concord. Don't worry about being. Fi- you just make sure them lug nuts is tight." <laughs> <laughs> and, and I told him, "I got you now, had my buddy." He <laughs> said, "Oh, don't do me like that." <laughs> <laughs> so you changed tires? Uh, I've I've changed tires and carried tires yeah and so but don't during that race they told me you changed the right rear tires the uh, rear, rear tires yeah i changed damn i changed i think it was i think i changed on one run and then uh gary Hargett, he shows up and and i said gary you changed the right rear no sh- oh yeah damn I so, didn't. so gary started changing <laughs> and i went back to airing the tires yeah. and what tires should be on there and that yeah. kind of stuff so i wonder as this race is going on you know trying to i i can't put myself in 
that environment. I wasn't there. I didn't live it, right? And I try to watch the races and try to imagine what it might have been like to stand on pit road in a race in 1978 in Daytona NASCAR because it's not the way it was. And it changed, you know, it got bigger, it oh, got yeah. busier. Um, but I'm, ma- I'm trying to imagine y'all being down there and running that race and saying, you know, three quarters of the way through the day, you're sitting there going, dang, we might end up all right here. This is going to be pretty decent. What? Well, it uh, being racing anybody, you know, it's just like the first time you go to Concord or Metrolina or a quarter midget track. You know, it's just kind of overwhelming when you first go, but then it's just it's a race car, and you want to make it go around that racetrack. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, down there, like I told uh, Hargett, we was coming up through the pack pretty good. I told him, I said, we're going to need another set of tires. And he he told me, he said, if we don't finish in the top ten, I can't even pay, pay the tire bill, you know. But we got another set of tires, and with about three laps to go, we didn't have radios. It was beat on the door or beat on the mm-hmm. fender. And he come by front straightaway there, and he was beating on that. And Hargett said, the car's running hot. I said, no, it's not the car. It's the driver. Because the last pit stop, Dale had told Jackie, my cousin, to bring a whole bag of ice <laughs> so he could un- – and he undone yeah. his – Took the seat belt, threw the shoulder harnesses loose, undone them, put them in there, zipped them up, and pulled them. He said, I'll just keep pulling them. He was was hot. He was hot and tired. He drove all the way down there, worked on the car all week, and then had to drive the race. Yeah. And and he put that whole bag of ice in his driving seat. Damn. (laughs) Summer is finally here, and when I'm thinking of summer plans, it's hanging out by the pool, barbecuing on the grill, and best of all, sports. For NASCAR racing to baseball games, there's nothing like kicking back and catching a game with some buddies or the family. And FanDuel helps me keep up with the latest action in the sports world. All I have to do is open the app and make up any of the bets I'm in the mood for. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. Every day, there's something for everyone all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash Dale and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. 21 plus and present in North Carolina, opt-in required. Wager requirements apply. Bonuses awarded as non-withdrawable bonus bets or profit boost tokens. Restrictions apply, including bonus expiration. See terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. So, um... Dad ends up with a seventh place finish in the Firecracker 400. The whole experience that he had with Will was great. Those five races sort of got those five races and that that run at Charlotte in his own car in the in the sportsman race is kind of what got him. Um, it's kind of what got him noticed by Rod Osterlin. Um, but you were with Dad duck hunting on the day that Rod Osterlin was trying to get a hold of him. I was. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, uh, run Concord. Then, I mean, we'd hang out and go, to, go out to eat and stuff. And I asked your dad, I said, Jack and myself, we're going duck hunting. You want to go? He said, man, yeah, I'll go. So we go to Moorhead where we had a, we had a house mm-hmm. at Moorhead City. And uh, I knew a man that had some duck blinds on the New River. So we we went down there and we was duck hunting. And uh, before cell phones. And so we come in one afternoon and the phone was ringing. It was Gail, my wife. And she said, will you please tell Dale to call his mother? I said, Martha has called here eight or ten times wanting to get a hold of him. And I said, sure. So I told him, and he called Martha, and 
She said, some guy in California named Rod Austin is trying to get a hold of you and is going to be up here Wednesday and wants to meet with you. Will mm-hmm. you call him? And so uh, my daddy was buying new trucks. We were selling new trucks at the used car place from Chevrolet mm-hmm. and from Curtis Chevrolet. So I went over there and <laughs> asked, asked them if they had a truck that uh, I could buy for daddy. And so, it's, and uh, the guy said, "Sure." He said, "We got one out here just like he's been buying." I said, "I'll take it." <laughs> and so that's when uh, uh, we got back, and I called Eddie and told him, "I said, Daddy, I bought a new truck." He said, "What'd you do that for?" And he, I said, "Well, Dale's got to come home," and so I, me and Jackie wasn't cut, quitting duck hunting. We was coming. We was staying, <laughs> and so. He said, let me talk to that boy. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and so Daddy, he got on the phone with Daddy, and, he, and he, your Daddy got off, and he looked at me. He said, hmm, Daddy June told me not to get a ticket and not to wreck his truck. Yeah. <laughs> he said, and he could he he told me I could drive it till, <laughs> till, did I, till I got back and got it from him. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what we did, and, and – uh, when I got home, he'd been calling the house, which I got home that weekend. And uh, he, my wife told me, said, call Dale. So I called him up. I said, what's the deal? He said, we got a race car. And you know where the, that company was across the street from Metrolina Speedway? It was a manufacturing company. They had leased that building, and that's where the shop was at. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he t- he told me he said I'm gonna I'm gonna drive for Rod Oslin and we're gonna have the cars there and I told him you was coming with me. Oh, <laughs> and I said, well that sounds good. What am I gonna do with all my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so Daddy ha- Daddy ins- assumed that you were gonna come work. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Oh. Man, I was in hog heaven. Really? Yeah, well, sure. Were you going to have to get rid of your race cars and all that? I did. You sold all your stuff? Yeah. You're done racing for yeah. a bit. For yeah. a bit. Yeah. So you went to work in the shop at Rod Ostland's when Dad was hired to drive full time. So there's a lot of things that happen. Um, some you may be aware of or remember, some maybe not, but they, Dave Marcus is the full-time driver for Rod. Mm-hmm. Dave doesn't want to be part of a, of a two-two car operation. They, Dad ran Rod's car a couple times at the end of the 78 season. He drove uh, Rod's car in a sportsman race at Charlotte, and then he'd go run top 10 or top 5 at Atlanta, and then he would then go and run in Ontario, uh, Jim Insulo would start the car, but Dad would hop in on the first pit stop or maybe first couple laps of the race and get to drive the car just to get experience. And then, but at, at Atlanta, end of the season, 1978, Marcus tells everybody he's not going to be part of this operation going forward. He's going to quit. And now Dad goes from being the B driver to the A driver going into 79. Um, and yeah, you're going to go into that shop. You don't, you know, you don't know any of them people. Do you know any of them people? Are you familiar with the situation? How comfortable it, was it? It, it was a bunch of youngins having a good time. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> I mean, it just, uh, I reckon the closest one I got closest to was Lula Rosa. Really? The engine, engine builder. builder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me and I like. Lou was good, and uh, now I wasn't there all the time working on the car all yeah. the time because I still had a shop. You still that, had your family business, to run. yes, had had that. But uh, every chance I got, I was there. Uh, There's another guy on the team named Dave, and then uh, Ricker, Doug, Doug, yep, Doug. Got to know Doug good. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Suitcase Jake come on. He did. And I like Jake, but, man, it was tough handling his language. Really? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, 
when we took the car to Daytona, of course, everybody has them jacked up on the stands and all. And I hadn't really noticed it. And I was under the car. I don't know what I was doing, changing a shock or something. I, yeah, I, that's what I was doing. And uh, I told Jake, I said, Jake, I said, man, it's not but a quarter-inch difference between uh, between the shock and the, I forgot what it was, one of the bars or something. Yeah, he was real close. Jake, he looked at me, he said, Donnie, this stuff is one in thousands, not inches. <laughs> he <laughs> said, it'll be fine. I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Jake, um, Jake would be a part of Dad's team through the middle of 1980. Um, famously kind of uh quitting on you know quitting the team after the charlotte race in may or so forth of the 1980 season and dad would eventually bring jake back to help on the bush car in the mid 80s uh working on dad's nova and so forth and i got a little glimpse into what that relationship was like dad and jake elder (laughs) and it was a mess on the radio it was a (laughs) turn I mean, it was a mess. Well, before then, we were at uh, North Wilkesburg, and uh, Dad was out there, and he was running, and and Jake was da 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 da, da you know, yeah. continuously. And about that time, I heard it go click, and <laughs> Jake turned around, and looked at me, oh, he turned the radio off. <laughs> I said he got tired of listening to you. <laughs> I said, he'll turn it back on by the time he gets ready to pit. Yeah. I said, or oh, we better get ready because he might just come in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, was, it was funny. Yeah. How come your uh, involvement was so brief? Uh, In terms like you weren't there that long. Like, so the I know you had the family business at home. Yeah, you had this. You had this avenue to to be a part of this team, but you never were going to be the full time guy. No. Why? Oh, uh, I didn't need to be. That's what it was. I yeah. mean, I just you know, uh, if if they needed me or anything. Uh, they'd call me up and uh, uh, like going to – and I I started going to more and more of them uh, during the pit stops and all that, and I'd go to the shop. But uh, I had enough to look after that I didn't – I it wasn't in my best interest – to be on the team all the time right you know it just you weren't gonna you weren't going to give up your family operation that was far too important to you that's exactly right yeah nothing and because i mean we can sit here today me and and people listen to this and and go man wow you know you were you were right involved in all of that you know, but you never were going to give up what your own family and the Reed fam- Reed's family had built. Right. And, uh, uh, I mean, that didn't make, I mean, didn't make me and Dale any less close. Sure. I mean, he just, he'd call me all the time or yeah. I'd call him, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Uh, but I didn't see that because I never did, I didn't do the racing for any of the money mm-hmm. uh, and I got very little all I all I done it for was because I love working on that car yeah but I couldn't put myself to that's all I wanted to do yeah and oh uh, uh, Rod's gonna sell the team in the middle of 81 to JD Stacy uh, Jim Stacy uh, you got he's a coal miner, checkered past. Uh, he gave you got a you got a vibe about him and uh, which would prove out. Uh, but you got a vibe around who that guy was and decided maybe you gonna step back take a break. 
Correct. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, sure did. Because uh, Dale, he told me what was going on, and I knew all about it. And I said, well, you'll have to go. Cause, I mean, I mean you're you going to go drive for him. Yeah. But I said, I'm not going to go work on the cars or go to the race or anything. Why not? Because I done met him. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'd looked in his eyes you two see. or three times. I'd seen him <laughs> at Charlotte and places. And I told Al, I said, it ain't going to last, buddy. Yeah. I can promise you. What was Rod Osterlin like? I always heard good things about Rod. He was. He, he was – he was down to earth, uh, very good, very uh, wise with his money. Yeah, and he knew when to when he was going to get needed to back out. Yeah, uh, because I don't think Rod, with all the his success. I don't think he was ready to step up and put all the money in it that would that it that was, was going to, require, to do. Not, yeah. yeah. So require. Are, is you know one of the things that I've always been curious about that I would love to ask Dad. Jim Stacy had always had, Jim Stacy in previous years in the late seventies had owned a car that Neil Bonnet drove. He bought the Cranifus number seventy one operation and turned it into a car uh, that would be this white number five. Neil Bonnet would race it for two or three years. Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly in nineteen eighty one how close of friends Dad and Neil were yet. Had they become friends? Had Neil tipped Dad off on Jim Stacy? Because Neil had had Neil's deal with Jim ended poorly, um, and I had wondered all these years whether, you know, as Dad begrudgingly went forward for about four or five weeks till he finally just quit in the middle of the season. But I wonder if Dad got tipped off a little bit too by some other people, mainly Neil Bonnet, that had been involved with Jim before. Well, I'm sure he did. Yeah. Eventually, but, Dad comes to you and says, "Hey, you were right." about Jim well uh he 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 called me one day him and Doug and wanted to meet me at the at the shop because I was still at the shop and he'd come by there a lot mm -hmm. and he said I just need to come talk to you yep. and so uh they both come up there dad and Doug Rocker yeah and he said he told me then he said that uh he he was getting out, and he was going to go drive Richard's car a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, that's a good move. He said, well, something will come up. I said, don't worry about it. I said, everything will be okay. Yeah. And uh, – but I didn't – I knew Richard, but I didn't – I wasn't over there when that took place. Yep. But now, then later on uh, – he called me before he ever done anything and asked me. He said, I got an offer to drive Bud Moore's car. Yep. And uh, and I told him, I said, you talking about Bud Moore, the 15 car? He said, yeah. He said, he said but Donnie, his, his words, he said, it's a Ford. <laughs> I, I told him, and this is what I told him. I said, Dale. I don't care if Bud Moore's running a Studebaker. Mm -hmm. I'll go with you with Bud Moore. I said, me and you both will learn a ton. And Doug was with him then, too. Uh, and Doug said, well, what am I going to do? I yeah. said, you mean it hadn't anybody offered you? He said, yeah, Junior offered me a job. I said, go sign the papers. I said, go to work for Junior. Mm -hmm. I said, we not. It's not that we know everything. <laughs> we, we got a lot to learn. I mean, we just fell into to the because of the everything just worked so smooth in '79 and '80. I mean, it was just unbelievable mm -hmm. how good the, everything did. And I said, "We way off base. You go to work for Junior," and he did that. And uh, 
and your dad, he, he signed with Bud, and I told him, I said, don't sign over a one- or two-year contract at the most. Mm-hmm. I said, that's all you – don't do no more. And he said, good idea. So, uh, Was there other opportunities or other places that he could go? Well, if, if it was, he didn't tell me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told him, and it may have been, I don't know, but uh, uh, we didn't discuss, you know, he didn't say anything about it. He just said, I, go, I said, you go, to, you go drive for Bud. Mm-hmm. I said, you, he'll be a lot better off. So um, you and Dad are around this time doing a lot of hunting together still. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the things about dad and hunting that I wanted to touch on, dad was putting on, you know, dad's putting his own stands in, in the tree. Dad's putting his own pegs in the tree. Dad did all his own stuff, right? Right. Um, y'all, when y'all would go hunt, you know, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like a guided deal. Dad, y'all did it all. Dad had this habit of putting himself ridiculously high in these trees. I mean, he's got I've got some pictures of him deer hunting. Stupid, stupid high. Un, 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 not even necessary. Um, the first time I went hunting with him in Alabama, the first, my very first hunt with him, he had to push my feet up on the pegs all the way to the top of this tree because I couldn't, I didn't have the, the length because he'd separated these pegs so far apart because he only wanted to put as many pegs as necessary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, gets me up in this tree, and we're, it feels like it's 75 feet off the ground. It's Might ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Terrifying. Um, you know, why do you – why was he – did you – you know, did, why was he that way? Uh, because – he wanted to push everybody to their limit as far as they could get. I mean, he he would push you to do better, everybody, yeah, me included. Because he took me to – we was in uh, – I think we was in Alabama then too because we went with Neil and then me and him leased a bunch of land down there one time. But uh, – uh, he had put went and put a stand up one evening and took me over there that morning and said, there's a stand. I said, well, you go get in yours. I hunted off the ground. I wouldn't, I don't like heights. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets more than six-foot step ladder, I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I hunted on the ground. He come back. He said, what would you see? I said, them same three bushes out there, I ain't climbing in that thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but – he would, and and hang off of trees. I mean, uh, I said you gonna break your neck. Yeah. He said, "Well, we're hunting." Yeah. <laughs> but he was some more outdoorsman. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, uh, I shot a deer in Alabama one time, and I watched the deer. It laid down under oak tree, and there were. Ten minutes, I'd look over there. I mean, he just stretched out. I looked over there one time; that deer was gone. We tracked that deer for probably two and a half or three miles. And there, when we got to the property line, you can't—you're not supposed to take any guns over anybody else's property, even for a deer. Well, we left all the guns beside a tree and kept tracking and found the deer. Your daddy jumps on the deer. And all he has is a knife, and the deer's alive. Dang. <laughs> that was a big wrestle for all of us because we was <laughs> all on that. And then we had to find our way out because I, I couldn't – man, it was – had to go back and get the, guns? all the guns. Yeah. And, and that was and just laughing and cutting up, eating pork and beans out of a can, drinking a Coke. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, I mean, one of the things that I always really was impressed by was how well he tracked deer. There's been a couple times where I was lucky enough to be with him in the woods, and I mean, a speck, a tiniest speck of blood, like 10 foot from the last speck of blood, and he could track it. He could see all that on the ground in, in a, you know, vivid, 
you know, the ground's full of color, and and he could see tiny detail, um, which always was impressive to me. Well, I'm gonna tell you, and I told him it. What made him so good, especially driving, was his eyesight. He had unbelievable eyesight. It's just like uh, fighter jet pilots. Mm -hmm. Those guys that could see the planes way out, you know, and everybody else is saying where, and they looking at it. Yeah. That's the eyesight. We could be driving down the road anywhere at Pocono or something at night. Look at that deer over yonder. I said, I can't even see the woods. What are you talking about, a deer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and but his his eyesight was just uncanny. Sean. I know. Yeah, we would be sitting in a deer stand and or on the farm in a truck or whatever, and he could see deer in the woods. That man, you know, you you're looking as hard as you can look, and he's pointing to it and showing you exactly where it's at. And you're like, Yeah, I don't see it. Exactly. And then all of a sudden. Five minutes later, that deer will move a leg or something, and you'll notice it. And you're like, "How in the hell did you see that?" Exactly. But he could. See, he. I mean, it was like immediate to him. Yeah. And well, I told him, I said, "Dale, you don't understand. I can't see that good because mm-hmm. I've had so many eye operations." Oh. Uh, yeah. And 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 you don't see that? I said, "Dale, I don't see it." Mm-hmm. I said, "That's just the way it is." <laughs> but you know. And uh, I think he and I got along so good because neither one of us would ever tell each other a lie. Yeah. I'd tell it straight out to him. It didn't make no difference who, how, or whatever. Hey, this is the way it is, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and he done me the same way. <laughs> Let's talk about this dirt car y'all built together to go race at 311. <laughs> yeah, we— we decided with the with the bush racing and the cup racing, we needed a dirt car too. Mm-hmm. So um, we built a wedge car, and we took it to Concord. What color was it? It was solid white, number mm-hmm. fifteen, and uh, uh, that's all we had on it. We didn't have no names or anything on it. Yep, and. Uh, uh, but one night at, at uh, 311, we was, we was on a break, and so we took it to 311, and uh, he went out there and run, and during the heat race, him and I don't know who it was, they kind of got together and hook wheels, and I saw the right front hub wheel and everything go across the across the track, yeah. across the uh, guardrail. Damn. And... <laughs> And but he drove it in there, and it was balanced pretty good because he didn't even know the right front was gone. <laughs> he come in, I stuck my head in the window, and he asked me. He said, "No, he just bro- just pinched the brake line off." And he said, "We can still run it." Yeah. I said, "Well, there's n- there's no right front on it. None. Yeah, it's gone." And uh, we Is- run that car several times, and then. He saw somebody, and he decided he was going to sell it. Is this your car? Yep. Yeah, there's Troy in front of it. Yeah? Yeah. Who? who Daddy drove that car. Uh, he. His name's, I got the roof of that car. Oh, heavy! I do. His name's <laughs> on it. Yeah, <laughs> he drove it, and so did so did uh, Ernie. Ernie Irvin. Yeah, that's right. Ernie drove it too. Yep. So, um, is that the car that y'all built? Yeah, that's the car we built. Hmm. I'd always wondered. So, um, that's you right here. I think you're in this picture. I know I saw Troy there. Yeah, I see Mike Herman Sr. Yeah. And uh, Daryl Cruz. Um, 
so I've seen pictures of that car, and somebody told me that that was your car. You own that car. And um, I ended up finding the roof. Somebody sold it to me. Um, Where did you find it at? So, you know, eBay. eBay, yeah, yeah. somewhere. Some guy walks up, says he has it or whatever, and yeah. it's a reasonable price. And I knew it was a rare part, yeah. you know, and couldn't believe it lasted as long as it did or that it's still around you know yeah now when we when we run the car at uh at uh, 311 it was solid white that's right. four penny and it had it yeah. had the blue 15 on mm-hmm. it wow you know, yeah there's n- i've never found like i'm i scrounge the internet for for everything see here's another picture of it this is just that's the same color. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's it. So I ain't, I've never seen any pictures of that car just all white. I've I mean there's there's I found a couple with the with that paint scheme on it. I've got one at the yeah. house. You do with it with it with it when all it's brand new when it's all white. Yeah. And and uh, the the top's a lot lower on it <laughs> on on the first car on oh. I mean, the window's not about this high. Yeah. And that's when he had uh, uh, hurt his knee at when him and Richmond got together Pocono. at Pocono. Yep. And then when he – we had the car over at your granddaddy's place. And he we was working on it over there. And at Robert G's or – No. Ralph's old Ralph's. Shop. Okay. Ralph's shop. Yep. And, uh, and he come over there with the cast on his leg. I got to get in there. I got to hear it run. You mm-hmm. know, he crawled in. I told him, I said, we're going to have to cut the roll bars out to get you out. He liked to never got out of because he couldn't, his knee, he just had it operated on. Jesus. So um, y'all went to 311 and crashed a car. Uh, the next week you decided you was going to let Ernie drive the car. Ernie's running good on the short tracks around Concord, dirt tracking around this time this is before ernie irvin's made it to the cup series at that right. point um daddy daddy didn't think that was a good idea to put ernie in there <laughs> he he told me he he called me because he had a meeting in uh michigan mm-hmm. somewhere up there in detroit and uh he asked me before he left he said you gonna fix the car i said man i'd already got it about fixed i said i'm gonna run it this weekend you gonna run our car this weekend i said yeah he said, who are you going to get to drive it? I said, I'm going to get Ernie to drive it. He said, Ernie Irvin? I said, I said, yeah, Ernie, he's he's pretty good shoe. I said, I'm going to put Ernie in it. He said, this, he said Ernie will knock. I'm not going there because yeah. I done knocked the wheels off of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he yeah. said. How'd Ernie do? We finished either second or third yeah. that Very night. Good. Did Dad drive the car again? It seems like we went to Concord one other time yeah. or something. Yeah. And every time we'd go somewhere, they'd uh, the promoters would have a fa- Why don't you let us know you coming? Yeah. <laughs> That's the reason we show up. We, we don't let on nobody in. know we coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the way I feel sometimes about my late model stock racing these days. Is sometimes you just want to show up. You just show up. Yeah. 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 That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. Um, Dad goes to drive for RCR again in uh, 1984. Uh, you ended up being a fixture from that point on on Dad's bush cars. Yeah, you and uh, you know Tony Senior and Tony. all Dad's buddies, his yep. brother Danny, yeah, um, Hal Houston, Teresa's dad, yeah. Think back to those years about you know how much fun that must have been going up and down. Dad run a limited schedule, building his own cars, and uh, you know you guys would just go it, have so much fun on the weekends. It, it was right in our wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean. You couldn't you couldn't get much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it just uh, uh, everybody. We just I mean it. We just had a good time. Yep. Oh, uh, it, it. We were at uh, Dover, and so 
we went to eat. Uh, it was a nice steakhouse. It, they, Dale didn't go. Yeah. It just just the crew went. He had something else he had to do. Y'all go on over there. And so we got ready to go. Lee Rick had the credit card. Rick Boss. Rick Boss. Mm-hmm. He had the credit card. And uh, and uh, Rusty, he come in. And <laughs> here we all were. I mean, the steaks, the whole deal. And and Rusty said, hey, one thing, I'm going to go to work for y'all. He said, y'all come eat all this high-dollar food. No, <laughs> Rick turned around, looked at him, he said, we get paid nothing, but we eat good. <laughs> <laughs> you ended up uh, messing with the bush car, but Richard Childerson, those guys would have you come help every now and then on the cup side as well. Yep, I'd go over and help them some. Uh, uh, he'd ask me to stay to, you know, move tires or because me and me and. Um, I knew the Goodyear guys real good. Yeah. And so a lot of times I could get matching numbers. <laughs> get the good tires. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, that's one reason I kind of quit. Buster wouldn't let me do it no more. Why? Uh, well, he kept thinking I was doing something to the tires. I, I, told, I told you, Daddy, I said, I ain't doing this no more. They're getting too picky. Yeah. <laughs> I so, said, you ended up quitting in Atlanta. Yep. Yep. Over, and that was why? That, and I was gone. I mean, I, I got to where I was gone most of the time. And I was missing being home with my wife and going to church on Sundays. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, uh, I just kind of said, that's it. And but I mean, we kept them myself kept doing everything. I mean, you know, going yeah. to eat, fishing, and everything else. Outside of racing, so that was kind of the end of your experience, just in, uh, working at a racetrack. I imagine, right? You went, you went to yeah. a simpler life, but you and Dad remained close, very close. All these years, you and Dad were friends. Y'all went on dates, you know, date night with the wives. What's date night with the wives with Dad like? Oh. What kind of places did y'all go to? Well, we went to the Red Barn. Uh, We'd go to Little's Kitchen. Little's Kitchen. I remember that. And we'd go to... Every Sunday night, we'd get home from a race. If we were traveling with Dad and Teresa, every Sunday night, the races started at lunch. Sometimes we could get home and it'd still oh, be yeah. daylight. Yeah. Which was amazing. That's why I want the one o'clock noon starts back. <laughs> yeah. But uh little uh we'd go to that little's kitchen. Yeah. Or the steakhouse. Yeah. Um and eat a prime rib. Oh yeah, they had prime rib. They did. Surf and turf. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So you know, I one of the things that, um, you know, one of the things that I always appreciated about you was your loyalty and, and um, protection of dad's legacy and Teresa, even. Um, you know, you, I think out of, res- I'm, I think you'll uh, agree that you don't do interviews or hadn't all these years, right? You hadn't told these stories. You nope. hadn't done these things out of respect for, for dad and for Teresa. Correct. Um, you're a loyal, you're a loyal, uh, uh, friend to both. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your, I'd love to hear your, your, your thoughts on Teresa. You know, we, we've all had our, We've all said what we've said. We've all had different opinions from time to time, and I had a, you know, hot and cold relationship with Teresa over the years. But I've always said, at this table, she's fair as she's as straight and fair as can be. And there's been some moments where she's proved to me that um, she's got, you know, she's 
she's done some things that have impressed me or surprised me. Um, and so I know that you have, you hold her in high regard. Um, and she's done a really good job protecting dad's legacy and taking care of that over the years. And you've wanted to honor that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Guarantee you. Yeah. Uh, Teresa's, uh, very fair. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I mean, uh, she she is. Uh, uh, I have high respect because she had even before uh, Dale's passing. He, he she had a lot on her, uh, and as Dale said, it might take her a while to get it done, but when it's done, it's right. And he had. As husband and wife, he really loved her. First class, he put her. He'd put her first, you know. Uh, and I respected him for that because uh, he and her, they just they jailed like mine and his, mine and his friendship. Mm-hmm. Oh, there, there was no, the whole times I've been, there was no big rows. Or, I mean, everybody has a little disagreements on, sure. on stuff, but yeah. when it come down to it, oh, that Teresa was really good at managing Dale. Period. Yeah. I mean, and, and not just me, but I've heard him tell lots of people, if it wasn't for that lady right there, I wouldn't have nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, she knew when to put the brakes on, <laughs> just like I, just like he'd put the brakes on me on doing something or me on him. Yeah. You know, when he when he'd ask about it, or before he would ask. I mean, we just had that where. Uh, but I think I still hold Teresa in high regards and thank the world of her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just she's really kept everything mostly low-key, yeah. you know, and not and not went out and tried to, do anything under Earnhardt's name. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just, it's, it's very gratifying for me. <laughs> yeah, I think she's handled it, handled the legacy and the, you know, the, the brand of dad um, really well, protected it. I mean, there's moments, uh, uh, you know, when the autopsy photo stuff was going on right after his death, I mean, she fought that as hard as she could. Oh, it yeah. consumed her every single day. And um, I appreciate her conviction to making sure that that was handled the way she wanted it to be handled. I don't, you know, I was really uh, grateful for what she was willing to do to, you know, to protect Dad in that, mom- that moment, you know. Right. And, um you know, she's, uh, like you say, I mean, it, it, sometimes it's tough, but it's fair. Yeah, Always exactly. fair. Um, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I know that there were, um, you know, even though you ended up getting out of racing around 98 or so, Dad still asked you for advice and so forth about maybe even helping operate the program, the DEIB uh, Bushker National Program, right around the time when I'm starting to get in there and drive the car. Yes, sir. He sure did. <laughs> we were in uh, uh, Catula, Texas, hunting, hunting. <laughs> <laughs> as usual. Yeah. <laughs> and and everybody else had gone. Me and him was around the campfire out there, and uh, he asked me, he thought, well, he said, Donnie, I got I got a plan. Mm-hmm. Here's what I want you to do. 
I said, what's that? He said, I want you to come to DEI and take over the Bush program. Really? Everything. I'm out. He said, I'm, I'm not running no more. You hire the drivers. You run it. You look after it. You, whatever you, that's, it'll be, that, that's your end. I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. Mm-hmm. He said, you get the cars built and you hire and fire the drivers and I'm with you. Yeah. And my words were, Dale, I'm not going to do it. And he said, what? I said, I'm not going to do it. I said, me and you have had as good a friendship and close as any two people can do. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, I know how you are and you know how I am. And how long do you think that would last with me at DEI telling you what we was going to do? And he said, in other words, you ain't going to do it. I said, nope. Because I said, me and you want to stay friends. <laughs> I said, in race cars or money or nothing else, is worth splitting that up. Yeah. I said, we see eye to eye on most things, but I said, when you get into that, I said, it don't, it, it's not going to work. I said, number two is, you already got a driver. He said, what do you mean I already got a driver? I said, put Dale Jr. in the car. And he said, not now. I, no, I ain't gonna put Dale Jr. I said, Dale, it's no different than me and you and Ralph and anybody else. I said, if you're gonna find out if the boy can drive, put him in the car. I said, matter of fact, if you tell me to go up there and take over, I'm hiring Dale Jr. to be my driver. <laughs> and that's exactly what I told him. And he said, Well, I'll think about it. Yeah. And so. I don't know. He come home and I reckon he told you and him them up there that that you was gonna be the driver. Yeah. And I was at the sporting goods store then, and uh, he called. I don't know next day or Monday or something. Donnie, I said, yeah. He said, can you come to the shop? I said, yeah. I ain't got anything going on. I can come to the shop. He said. Tony and Tony Sr., I don't think they like him putting Dale Jr. in the car. He said, would you come up here? I said, yeah. So I went, drove around to the back, right, walked in the door, <laughs> and Tony and Tony Jr. met me <laughs> when I walked in the back door. And he said, you know who he's putting in the car? I said, yeah, Dale Jr., because I told him to. And after that, I ain't. I went up and saw saw Dale. We went up to the office, and I never heard any more. Was any more said? <laughs> no, I don't reckon. I remember going. So I hadn't heard that story. I remember going into the shop. Somehow or another, I got called up to the over to the bush shop, which was down by the chicken farms at that time. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know why they wanted me to come in there, but I walk in, I walk in the door, and Tony Jr. and Tony Sr. are standing there, and they they just grinning. And I don't, I'm standing there like wondering why they're grinning at me and what I'm doing there. And Tony Jr. told me to look at the roof of the car, and I turned around and looked at the roof of the car, and my name was on it. Yeah. And I said, damn, is this some kind of joke? This ain't funny. Because I didn't know what I was going to be doing. I didn't have much going on with my driving. Yep. And Tony Jr. said, no, ain't no joke. You the driver. <laughs> and I was like, really? They were like, yep, we're going <laughs> racing. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I'd always kind of wondered how how all of that went down because Dad never told me. I saw him. I guess I don't even remember when I saw him next. Yeah, but it wasn't like I went. You know, he called me up in his office or anything and said, "Hey, I want to do this." I walked into that bush shop and your name was on. Name was on the car. Oh, see, like, I didn't know holy, that. I'm like, holy cow! <laughs> yeah. All I know is he told he. Well, after we left Texas out there, oh. Uh, me and him never said any more about it. And he, he called me at, at the office. Mm-hmm. Told me, he said, I need you to come up here. So I told him Dale Jr. was going to, he said, I went out there and told him Dale Jr. was going to drive the car. He said, uh, you know, can you come up here? I said, yeah, I can come up here. Mm-hmm. So 
So I just went up there and that's that's what happened. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> Let's talk about Dad's death, his passing. Where were you that day? Sitting on the television looking, watching it. You know, did you get a phone call? Did you get a text message from somebody? Do you remember how you learned the news? Well, after, after the wreck, I told Gail, I said, Dale is bad. I said, real bad. I just knew it. Yeah. And about 30 minutes, I got a call from Daytona that they said he didn't make it. Yeah. And I already had that feeling. I mean, it just come over me. And uh, that was about how one sad moment. Oh, yeah. How did you manage to process that grief? I mean, did you, you know, what is what is a guy at your age losing his best friend? What is what is your what did you do to manage the grief and, and the loss? And, you know, what would you do anything different or? You know, everybody handles those type of things differently. Um, I was his son. I was young. Had a whole life in front of me. Um, I wasn't. In, you know, not many people were in your position. Um, he didn't. Ha- he had a close group of friends and, uh, but a small circle. Um, you know, how do you manage losing your best friend? You know, that at that part of your life. Well, uh, it's like if you lose anybody oh and i've never you know been as dale told me he said you just don't get emotional about nothing mm-hmm. and, they, and <laughs> neither he, did he huh neither did he he got mad if that's an you know that's the only emotion i ever saw out of him <laughs> <laughs> No, he was more, he was neutral or very angry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've seen him on all of it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but but uh, uh, he um uh, I I just that it's gonna happen to everybody, mm-hmm. and and the only way to handle it is if you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal savior i mean that's the only thing and through him i can handle it i just handled the death of my wife Mm -hmm. and that was that's the worst thing that can happen to anyone that's uh got a spouse that we'd been together for from dating till marriage 54 years and we didn't do anything without each other, you know. I mean, you know. Sure. But, uh, uh, and with Dale, it just, I think about him every day. I mean, I can be doing something and think, you better not be doing this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do it that way. Don't do it that way. Yeah. Because I asked him one time, I said, I said, are you out there driving? I said, because I do. I said, you out there driving, and no matter where you at, do you ever say, ask yourself, Dale, don't do this again? He said, more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, but I just handled it as, as I pray that I, I get to see him again. Yeah. That's what I do. You know. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and it'll be totally different, but you know, it'll be better. It, I hope. I, oh, it, it's eyes not seen and ear has not heard the things I've got for you. This down here is just something little the Lord put together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I believe myself. You know, when I um, when Dad was gone. It was a gut punch, you know, and you didn't know what to do next or how you could go. You didn't know how you could do anything next. Exactly. And uh, 
the only way you could pull yourself together and be able to move forward and carry on in this life is to believe that you would see them again, you know, right. and that that's what's in store. And I think that really helped me. Get, yeah. I feel like he and you both are on the same page as when he lost Ralph. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it was, it, it was, I mean, it didn't happen the same, but it's dead. Yeah. I wonder, um, I've also, I've, I've often wondered, Donnie, that, you know, when dad, when I lost dad, I had, a I had a, I had a life in front of me that was, I had a comfortable existence. I had a race, I had a job and an amazing race team around me and I had everything, right? Right. When he lost his dad, he had nothing. He right. had, he was working a job at Great Dane or whatever, yeah. right? I mean, he had right. nothing, barely enough food in the fridge to eat, no racing job. And how, and he was not making all the right decisions, you know? He was, he had a lot of um, turmoil. routing, turmoil, <laughs> routiness, <laughs> anger, frustration. Yeah. yeah. I am so... I think it's so incredible that he made it out of sheer determination and and uh but you know I made it because I had so much supporting me in that moment. I had a lot of support around me. He made it when he and he and there were, you know, seventy two or I mean seventy four, seventy five, seventy six, seventy seven. He's just making it up, trying his hardest every day. That's right. I don't know how in the hell he did it. Yeah, well, uh, how did he not? How, how it could have failed even without fault, his fault, right? Well, sure. There were so many yeah. things that couldn't, could have maybe not gone the right way. Yeah. Opportunities that he might not have been given. But, golly, it's insane what he accomplished. You're right. Put in that position, losing his dad, his direction, and his guidance. And being just left like a vessel out in the open sea to figure out his way home. That's right. It's incredible. But it's amazing. It not only him, but how many stories it is like that. It's amazing what man can do if he has to do it. <laughs> I mean, if he has to do it. Yeah. I mean, what else do you do? Yeah. I mean, what if it just jerked everything away from you today what are you gonna do you're not gonna quit eating you're not no. gonna quit breathing yeah yeah you know you're gonna figure out something and the amazing thing is just like they'll it back then i ain't gonna say now but back then he would have drove a race car if they didn't even pay him yeah because he just that was that was him. He was married to that race car, mm -hmm. and and uh, when when uh, they offered uh, Ernie the twenty eight car, me and him was standing on the back of the trailer as we were picking and joking and doing this and what you going to do about that, you know? And Ernie come up there. And Ernie said, Dale. And I was standing there, and it, but he said, Dale, you know how much they're going to pay me to drive that 28 car? Ernie had never, I mean, he didn't, money. <laughs> there again, he grabbed Ernie, pulled him right up there to him. Ernie, keep your mouth shut and go drive the car because people like you and myself We'd drive them for nothing, but they don't know that and don't tell them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he would. Yeah. And but it, uh, uh, he knew what he was going to do, mm -hmm. and he went for it and and earned every bit of the respect and everything he got mm -hmm. because he was. He was one of a kind. He sure was. You are too, buddy. I um, 
I want to thank you for coming today. Uh, I know, again, like you don't, you don't, you're not one that wants to sit down and talk about it. Um, you lived it, and that was enough for you. You're a unique kind of guy. You got really cool qualities in terms of your, uh, you know, your commitment and loyalty to your own family business, your friendship to my father, your, uh, your, you know, your relationship with Teresa and, and, and uh, respect for her, uh, your stand up, no BS. Um, <laughs> you been, see what you get. <laughs> yeah. You've been a, you've been a, you were, you were a great friend for my dad i'm thankful that he had you in his life and um he benefited from that many many times um and i'm thankful that you are comfortable to come here today and and share with us um you know that we we hear a lot of stories and talk a lot of stories about dad on, on my show and it's a lot of his you know friends from time to time but it's mostly this you know the industry and the people that he worked with within the industry but we don't there won't be many opportunities for somebody to hear from one of his best friends and um and i love that you're protective of that of that story and as you should be but i'm thankful you wanted to share it with us today donnie so i appreciate you well i appreciate you having me and I felt like the only reason I'd done it was Dale would approve of it. <laughs> I mean, uh, because I hadn't went and told anybody anything mm -hmm. uh, because that was between me and him. Yeah. You know, and I know a lot of stuff I ain't going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and not necessarily bad. Right. But I just, it just, that's the way it is. Yeah, I believe it. Well, that's why y'all are great friends, you know. There's some stories that are between you and him alone, and um, I can appreciate and honor that as well. Well, I certainly appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thinking about me, and I love you. I love you too, Donnie. Yes, sir. All right. Donnie Reeves on the Dell Jr. Download. All right, so a great conversation with Donnie Reeves. Um 73 years old years young however you want to look at it great friend of my dad's and just some cool stories um felt like you know trying to dip back into that memory bank and going way way back 50 60 years um can be a challenge at times um really liked the you know the finish of the conversation but um you know, there were some things that I wanted to touch on. One of them being his relationship with Teresa. You know, we, we've had a lot of conversations on this show about Teresa in the past, and everybody shares their truth when they come in this room. I know Donnie has a lot of respect for her, and out of that respect has always kind of kept his personal stories about Dad and with Dad to himself because Teresa – is very private and and donnie is as well and so um you know i uh you know i wanted him to share you know his opinions and thoughts about that um because i i thought that you know people should hear it um and so there are you know there are some things um the 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 conversation and 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 around teresa can is complex and 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 uh uh, but but there uh, you know there were a lot of moments and a lot of times in my life when there were some great memories and great moments um, that involved her and Donnie has a great you know appreciation for her and and I wanted him to have that opportunity to share so um, that was that was pretty important um, there you know there's some other great moments there as well around um, I like talking to him about how he dealt with the dad you know losing dad um i'm curious his you know what how people view that moment for themselves and and um i thought what he shared was was helpful and good for people who might go through loss or deal with loss um 
you know, a lot of times we take these stories or take these opinions and thoughts of, of somebody that's got so much wisdom and experience and try to apply, uh, you know, apply them to our own lives and, and moments in our own lives. But um, just cool. He was, you know, he was kind of somebody from dad's part, uh, from a part of dad's life that rarely gets shared. And that, you know, that's the, that's the person that's going to, you know, that's the person that goes on double dates with dad. Like, you know, we, who, who else does that? Who else do we know has done that? Um, he's dad's best man at his wedding. He is, um, you know, he's going hunting and, and, and racing the short tracks with dad. And there's not a lot of people around that can tell their lives or dad's lives from that perspective. So hope you appreciated it. I certainly enjoyed it. I was going to have Donnie on at some point and knew he was kind of reluctant to, to do this, but I was going to get him on the show at some point. So I'm glad we got that done. And it was a lot of fun for me. So I appreciate you guys tuning in and listening to Donnie. And um, yeah, so thank you, Ally, for everything you do as well. Ally, do it right. They do. They bring us a great, great guest segment every single week. And uh, they brought us another Ally again in Donnie Reeves. Uh, and if you're, you know, saving up for something like race tickets to the next race or a brand new car or maybe a new house. Um, we're all better off with an ally, so choose ally to support you in those efforts. Uh, it's time for the white flag. The teardown with Jeff Gluck and Jordan Mayanke dropped last Sunday night. They covered everything from Indianapolis right after the checker flag fell. Um, get their immediate reaction to what they saw on Sunday. You can also... Listen in to Actions Detrimental from Denny Hamlin behind the driver's seat or behind the wheel of uh, one of the next-gen cars that was out there competing at Indianapolis, his point of view of how the race went down. All the spotters got together on Door Bumper Clear this week to discuss their opinions about the race, the decisions for um, how the race unfolded late. Um, were very colorful and all over the board. Dirty Air, our show, dropped yesterday as we, too, um, touched on Indianapolis and my opinions about the race, maybe a little bit different than others. Um, and then today, Speed Street with Connor Daly and Chase Holden uh, will come out, which will be great because Connor is, um, you know, fresh off a of 14th place finish in the Xfinity race at Indy. He also raced in the Truck Series race over at IRP. On Friday night, so a lot to lot to lot to listen to there with Connor and his experience driving stock cars and trucks in the NASCAR series. Tomorrow, DJD Reloaded, where we'll cover um, the experience at Langley. I had racing my late model stock car should be a lot of fun. Might bring in a few people to join in on that conversation mm -hmm. uh, for DJD Reloaded. Then Dirty Mode Doe is off this week. They won't be dropping a show. Going to give those guys a break, but. Starting live next week, you'll be able to tune in to our YouTube channel. We'll be doing some live shows um, with Tim's covering some of the best bets to make or some of the more fun bets that those guys may be making as we go into the Olympic coverage on NBC. Um, don't forget about the Dirty Mo Summer Games. They're coming. Andrew. Um, give us a little taste of what the Dirty Mo Summer Games are all about. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we've got the Summer Games in Paris that are going on. So Dirty Mo Media, we had to have our own version of the Summer Games. You know, we did scavenger hunts in the race car graveyard, a Hot Wings Challenge bus races at Charlotte Motor Speedway. So uh, it's exciting. There's some controversy. There's some heated moments. There's some clutch moments. So uh, that'll be coming soon. Absolutely. And we got an Apple review from Bald Tommy. <laughs> As a newer fan of NASCAR, I've learned so much through this show. You will have guests on who I've never heard of or would normally skip, but I find out they are amazing people with great stories. That is this week, Bald Tommy. <laughs> that is this week's show. You've already listened to it because we have just had Donnie in the room, but he would be a great example of that type of a guest. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Check out Dirty Mo Media on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram.